Praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for another day. I will pray, Lord, that this day you'll do great things in every life in Jesus' name. We are asking, O oh Lord, that you open the pages of scriptures for us again. And as we learn, as we study, that the impact and the influence of the world will be seen and visible in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. That, Lord, the evidence of grace, the evidence of your transforming power, will be seen in every life in Jesus' name. That our study, our learning, will not result into the results of the children of Israel always coming, appearing before you, and never able to come to the very practical demonstration of obedience to the word. Lord, we pray, we'll see the cleansing, the evidence of the cleansing of the word in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. That a crush, crucify the old man in every one of our lives. That we will live like a new lamb, new creatures in Christ. And our lives will bring glory to your name in Jesus' name. Make us different this year than we ever were. I will pray, Lord, that even we ourselves will be able to see the change. The transformation you have effected in our lives. Touch us in every way. And touch every section of the workers, of the leaders. That we will see the impact of the word in every section of the work. Thank you Lord for the answer. In Jesus name we pray. In our first clinic this morning. We come to Joshua, Joshua chapter 2. In Joshua chapter 2, we're reading from verse 8. We're not looking at what took place. The conversation. The commitment. The covenant that came as a result of Rahab making a confession. And then the spies making a commitment. And out of that confession, out of that commitment, out of that conversation, out of the scene that we see in this interaction between Rahab and these spies, a lot of things come out. The discovery that those spies made and the discovery that we are making today in this word of God. In Joshua chapter 2, we're reading together from verse 8. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. Now, at to such ways, these spies, they came to Jericho. And yesterday we talked about research. Yesterday we talked about investigation. And we talked about gathering information. How do you gather information where there's no radio? How do you gather information where there is no television? How do you gather information? There was no internet. How do we gather information? When there was no combined assembly. To gather everybody together. And then begin to ask them. What do you know about this? What do you know about this? How do you gather information? And yet you do not reveal who you are. What you are doing. And you do not reveal your identity. Where is the place? That many people go either to eat or to relax or to just talk or to just give out information. Where does the, the gossip, the air say, the conversation, the talk, where does that take place in an inn? 
in a, in a motel. In a place where many people come. That's why the spies went to that place. Because they knew everybody will be there. There's an open door. There is no discrimination shutting anybody out. Everybody has a chance to come into the inn. That's why they went there. And you can tell. They kept their dignity. And they kept their holiness and purity. And they kept their righteousness. They didn't go to Rahab to commit sin. They didn't go to that inn. To that place. To also kind of give away themselves and give chance to the flesh. No. They went there because that's where everybody went without any restriction. And that's where information comes out. That's where everybody just talks and talks and talks. You know, as you look at the inn on that side, there you have people talking and they're talking about this, our country. And they're talking about this. And they're chipping those things out. And these people are used dropping. And they're finding out what are they saying? What are they thinking about? And what, are, what is their fear? What is their confidence? And what is their misgiving? That's why they went there. And now as they went there. And, every, and some of the people there knew. As they looked at them. These, as you know there are people that go to such a place almost every day. There are people that go to that kind of place every time. And there are people that make that a habit. Anytime they want to relax. Anytime they want to just drink and forget their sorrows. Anytime they want to just, you know, give away themselves and, and just think about all the, all the things that are going on. Anytime they want to meet their friends, it's a meeting point. For almost everybody in the, in the community. And so they went there. And some of those people said. Look at those two people there. I've never seen these people here before. What do you think about this? Looks like it's even a, a, a look. No matter how they disguise in their dressing. We can tell. These ones are Israelites. And some of them immediately went to the king. And they said there's something here. And we have these two spies, and they have come, and they have come to spy out the country. The way they were listening to the people just chapping and talking and uh, just, uh, you know, discussing. And the way they were very, very intent and very serious, it looks like they're gathering information. And then they're Israelites. They come to search out, the land. that's how they knew. And so don't, don't say that, you know, over here, see all these spies, they went to Rahab. And then when you are making your own investigation, then you go to Rahab. We'll be watching you. Because, you know, you have a radio. They didn't have any radio. They, you, you have all the newspapers. They didn't have all those newspapers. You have the internet. They didn't have all those. You have the geography books and all the sociology books and all the, all the books that are written. If you want to gather information about any country in the world, you can go on the internet and surf the internet and just browse through and then you can see anything you want to see. Their language, their culture, their climate is at our fingertips now. You know what the internet has done? The internet has given us information at, in our fingertips that our forefathers did not have in a whole generation today. Because of the internet and because of technology, we can have information in one day that our parents did not have in their whole lifetime. Information is there today. And in the internet will give you more information that you can, than you can get from Rahab. And when you study the Bible, you need to understand the context. And you need to understand what they were, where they were, why they did what they did, and why you cannot do the same thing today because of civilization and because of all the information is now available everywhere. But now let's come back to Joshua chapter 2. And before they laid down, they were laid down, she came up, up, up unto them upon the roof, and she said unto the men, I know. That the Lord has given you the land. And that your terror is falling upon us. 
and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. She said, I know, Rehab, how do you know? Again, come back now. This woman was there. And everybody in town came to her. And she served them food, served them wine, served them every other thing. She could serve them as a harlot. And she had a monopoly of that kind of business. And there was no other place. Everybody, went. politicians went there. And the cabinet and the ministers of the king, they went there. And the poor people, peasants, they went there. The rich, they went there. Everybody went there. And she had been hearing quite a lot. And she knew. She said, I know, Rehab. How do you know I'm here? I don't move out of here. And all these people come from every section of the city, every section of the town. And they talk and they tell. And I can, and I can say without any shadow of doubt the inhabitants of the land they are afraid because of you for we have heard we have heard we have heard for we have heard in verse 10 how the lord dried up the water of the red sea for you when ye came out of egypt and what he did unto the two kings of the amorites that one on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in us. In the earth beneath. Wait a moment. She heard. They heard. She knew. They knew. What's the difference between all those people that got the same information and then Rahab? What's the difference? What's the difference between the king that also had the information and Rahab that had the same information? What's the difference? Between all these people that came to the inn, that came to her, and they even had the original information before her, because it was their coming that alerted her, and it was their discussion that made her she know this is what is going on. What's the difference between them? They had the same information, but they had different responses and different reactions. The thing is, she thought about what she heard. And because she thought about what she heard, she had faith in God. We know that your God is God in heaven and God on earth. They also heard the same information. And the way they looked at the information, instead of bringing faith, it brought fear. You can hear the same thing. We can all hear, we can hear the same thing, depending on the state of your mind. Watch the information, the instruction, the teaching, the revelation. What it will produce in you, it depends on your state of mind. You can have the same thing, hear the same thing. Your purpose of mind, your goal, what you had in mind before you came here to the congress. And what's uppermost in your heart? And what you want to see achieved? What's your focus? What's your concentration? What's your thought? You can hear all this. And you may not be able to gather together the right response. Because your response will depend on the state of your mind. On your readiness to know what's the goal. What's the purpose of God? In revealing all this to me, a person may hear wise things and still remain foolish. A person may hear faith inspiring words and still be faithless. Because it depends on how you think about what you hear. The king was ready for a fight. 
But Rahab was ready to join her lot with the people of God. State of mind. Both of them knew the spies had come. And the king came to search. Give them up. Show them to me. I need to deal with them. But Rahab also saw the spies. And she knelt in her heart. We have heard. That God has given you the land. We are afraid of you. Although we are afraid of you. Can you strike a covenant with me? I don't want to perish. I know that our people are going to perish. I don't want to perish. But the king said. Well give it the last fight. And all the ministers in the cabinet said. Well give it the last fight. And yes we hear. Yes we know. The Lord has given them. The God of heaven. And earth has given them the land, but will give it the last fight. If it takes the last drop of our blood, we'll fight until we die. That's exactly what happened. They fought until they died. But Rahab said, Spies, I don't know your names. That's not important now, but I don't want to die. I don't want my father to die. I don't want my father's house to die. Can you strike a covenant with me? Why are you here? We're hearing all this together. What impact does it have on you? In verse 12. Now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord. This woman is changing. Swear unto me by the Lord. Not by the idols of the land. By the Lord. Then says, I have showed you kindness. That you also will show kindness Unto my father's house. Good action begets good action. Sowing produces reaping. I have sowed kindness into your life. Can I reap some kindness back? Look at this woman. This woman is already operating a law. A, the law of sowing and reaping. The law of cause and effect. The law of give and receive. I have showed kindness unto you. Will you show kindness unto me and to my father's house? And then she said, And that she will save alive in my father, and my mother, and my brethren, and my sisters, and all that we have, and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, Our life for yours, if. Our lives for yours, if. We cannot teach you all the doctrines now. There is no time, Rahab. We cannot tell you everything about, you know, salvation is conditional. You know, Rahab, we cannot tell you all the details or the theological fine points of being redeemed. But redemption is conditional. Rahab, we cannot tell you now the oppressions of God, the dealings of God with his covenant people. But the covenant keeping God gives a condition there is an eve at least that you will know that's why they said our life for yours if ye utter not this our business if ye utter not this our business because we know that the in the situation here is a house of talk it's a house of revealing secret. It's a house of careless conversation. And since people are still going to keep on coming, there's a condition. And except you fulfill that condition, you will not be saved. Salvation is conditional. Deliverance from death is conditional. Redemption is conditional. That the faithfulness of God unto us, unto his people, is conditional. If you do not reveal this, our business, it shall be when the Lord has given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with you, with thee. Then she let them down by a cord through the window. For her house was Upon the town wall. And she dwelt upon the wall. 
And she said unto them, Get you to the mountains. Rahab, what's your concern? Giving advice to the spies. Oh, and she said, Yes, God will save me. But through them, I don't know Joshua. Joshua does not know me. When he come to conquer the land, I need to keep on thinking good of them, talking good to them, giving them, protecting their lives. Because it is in their existence, in their remaining alive, I will remain alive. I need to advise them. Do you think about that? That God will help you through me. Through your pastor. Through your leader. It's in the happiness of the leader. You have happiness. And it's in the self-confidence and courage of the leader. That you will have faith. It's when I have the rest of mind. And I have the confidence in God. And I'm not distracted here and there. That I'll be able to center on the meal. The spiritual food that will help you. If I'm weak, you'll be weak. If I'm weak, you will not be strong. If I am weak, you'll not have everything you need to have. It's in my joy, you'll have joy. It's in my happiness, you'll have happiness. It's in my confidence and faith and boldness and courage. I'll be able to give to you without any fear or favor. And without any kind of retreat. Retreating and running away from business. The spiritual business. It's in that. That you as a church will be strong. And this Rahab. He, she knew. It's in the preservation of these two spies. That I and my father's house will be preserved. Why don't we ever think about that? That you need your pastor. So that you'll be able to have everything you ought to have. You need him to be strong. And you need him to be courageous. And you need him to have confidence. But if you want him weak, it's going to affect you. If you want him sick, it's going to affect you. If you want him fearful, it's going to affect you. And so Rahab understood, let me do my best and give them all the advice, all the counseling, all the help, all the upliftment I can give them. Because they will be able to talk to Joshua. And when they come into that, you'll find out what happened in chapter 6 when we get there. That Joshua called the two spies and said, where is that woman you talked about? I don't know her. You know her. Can you, can you show her and then preserve, protect her? Let's be wise. And let's be intelligent. And let's act in such a way for our own best interest. And then he tells us in verse, uh, in verse 16. And she said unto them, get you to the mountain. Lest the pursuers meet you. I don't want them to meet you. I need you alive. And hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned. And afterward, may ye go your way. And the man said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, that thou shalt bind this line of scarlet, of scarlet thread, in the window, which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee why did they say that that's how we were saved that's how you are going to be saved how were you saved we well, remember far back in egypt apply the blood and stay inside the house all the people that were outside their house they were destroyed 
And so here is the same scene. The condition of salvation has not changed. Abide. Abide. Remain. Abide in him. If you abide in me. And my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Little children, let that which you have heard from the beginning abide in you. If that which you have heard from the beginning abide in you, then you will not be ashamed at his coming. Abide. And they told Rehab, they said, Rehab, you know what? You're going to do something. You will abide in the house. And your father and your mother and all the people you have this concern for. That they will be saved. They must abide in the house. Now it tells us, it shall be in verse 19. That whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street. That's what they told them in Egypt. These people had a good remembrance of the condition of salvation, of the condition of deliverance, of the condition of preservation, of the condition of redemption. They had been told at the time of Moses, kill the lamb. And when you kill the lamb, then you abide in the house where the blood of the lamb is. If anybody is out, the angel of death will catch up on him and destroy him. And so they told her the same thing. You will tell people that, you know, you want to bring into the salvation experience. You tell them the same thing you heard. The same repentance that God showed the salvation, you tell them. And the same faith in Christ that got you that salvation, you tell them. And the same condition of abiding, that's what you tell them. And that's exactly what he told them. This is how we were saved. And this is the way you will be saved. Abide, remain. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head. And we will be guiltless. Now, notice something. She didn't know when they will come. He didn't discuss that. We don't know when Christ will come. We don't have that revelation. They didn't, she didn't know whether it's tomorrow of course she knew it couldn't be up to three days because she said you will hide yourself for three days at, at least that she knew and then you will go back to your place and then you'll come and then we know you're going to conquer the land but as to the day they will come she didn't know as to the hour they will strike she didn't know and therefore since the condition is to abide and to keep on abiding until they come isn't that similar to what the lord is telling us that we don't play or joke with her salvation that you keep on abiding until he comes because we do not know the day or the hour when he will come. And then whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head. If any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, again the condition. If thou utter this our business. How we need to repeat the condition over and over that nobody will forget that salvation that redemption that deliverance that gets into heaven is conditional and we don't forget ourselves they gave me a promise god gave me a promise and we're talking about faith and because the promise is there, then we forget ourselves. In verse 20, and if thou utter this, our business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, according to your words, so 
be it. You learn something from that? I cannot change the condition of salvation according to your word. So be it. I cannot change the condition of redemption. The condition of getting to heaven according to your word. So let it be. You know it. I'm just a pagan. In this inn, over here, what do I know? I cannot modify it. Neither can I add anything to it or subtract from it. We cannot add to the message of salvation. Neither can we subtract from the message of salvation. According to your word, so let it be. Yours is to obey. Yours is to give in yourself. Yours is to just yield to it. This is the word of salvation. And there's nothing we can do to detract or to decrease or to diminish anything from it. And she said, according to your word, so be it. And she sent them away. And they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window immediately. Take action immediately. That's how to get saved. That's how to remain saved. That's how to have the protection, the redemption, the salvation, the deliverance that the Lord has promised. Immediately, she bound the scarlet uh, thread on her window. What's scarlet? That's red. And then blood in the land of Egypt, that's red. The same thing. The same thing. There was no priest there. You know the children of Israel. They couldn't kill an animal. A priest must do that. And these two spies are not priests. And so they couldn't kill an animal and say, apply the blood. We must not go beyond our territory. We must not go beyond the line that God has drawn for our ministry. We're just spies to gather information. But this you will do. This color red, which looks like blood, put it there. So that when we come, we'll see. It's like the mark of the blood. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. When we see this, a symbol, a representation of that blood that the Lord told us to apply in the land of Egypt when we see this then your life will be spared just like God spared our lives when he saw the mark of the blood and then we're told in verse, two, in verse um, 22 and they went and they came onto the mountain and abode there three days what two spies are you not godly men and then Rahab a pagan that just came to faith in Christ give you an advice abide three days and then you are bored three days yes an unbelieving medical doctor knows more than a believer who did not study medicine. And so if you go to a nurse who is not born again, you go to a doctor who is not born again, and he tells you, this is how to keep healthy. It's talking from the background of knowledge. And although you are born again, you are going to abide by that. If you enter an aeroplane and you have a pilot who is not a believer, is not a Christian, and then they make the announcement, fasting your seat belt, they're talking from knowledge, that's their profession. And when they talk like that, you cannot say, I am a believer and he is an unbeliever. You're going to, that's knowledge. And that's how it is in life. And this woman, she knew. She knew the times in which they lived. And she knew the condition of the place in which she lived. And she said, those people, they don't give up. The people of Jericho, they're determined people. They'll be searching for, for three days. She knew her people. And these, these spies, what did they know about Jericho? And therefore she said, you must abide three days. Be patient. I know our people. 
And but if they get three days and then they don't find you, they're going to, they're going to give up. I know our people. And if the people, if they're telling you the truth and they're telling you how to preserve and protect your life, are you going to be so proud and say, I am born again? Yes, you are born again. How much of chemistry or biology or physics does your new birth communicate to you? How much of political science do you know because you are born again? How much of administration? Do you know because you are born again? How much of medical science do you know because you are born again? When they give us the information we need, we must accept. You know, somebody, somebody goes to the doctor and then the doctor said, What? This is high blood pressure. This is high. In fact, how you remain alive, we can tell 216 on 135. You're almost dead. Immediately cut off salt. I sent that back to the sender. That's not my portion. I'm a child of God. I will not use salt. God forbid. And then he goes on. And then he goes back to the, his house. And he says, doctor, those people, they don't know anything. They know something. And then he puts the salt there. Well, the end of the story. One day you just collapse like that. You are gone. The blood has got into your brain. And your heart is affected. Those doctors, they know something. You know, sometimes, it, some of our people, when they come to me for counseling, I went to the doctor, and the doctor said this. He's an unbeliever. And I said, that's not me. I'm a child of God. Why don't you listen? They listened. And they did exactly what this, uh, this woman said. And they remained there. And then it says, the until the pursuers returned. And the pursuer sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. They will not find you. Yeah. If you abide by the condition. Now, now. If the spies will listen to you, this woman, why will you not listen to me? I know more than Rehab. Would you accept that? If I and Rehab, if we took exam together on knowledge, on salvation, on holiness, on how to get to heaven, and then they said, we're going to be tested, and Rehab took a paper, and I take my paper. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, I will get distinction and that woman will get F. But, they listen to her. That's why I'm surprised. With all I know, I talk to you. And I tell you, this is it. And there's no alternative. And when you don't listen, then I wonder, how are you thinking? Because they listen to Rahab. You must listen. That will preserve your life. And so it says, So the two, the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him, What? And told him, Wait. When the 12 spies came back, they didn't go to Moses and just tell him. They told the congregation. That's what brought the trouble. We must not fall into the mistake of the past years. The sin that delayed Israel for 40 years in the wilderness. The spies came back and they told the congregation, everybody. And they said... There are giants in the land. And the people began to cry and to weep. 
Don't tell everybody. I told the church secretary. I said if something is coming up in your mind. An idea. Can't we do this? I said don't tell the full time workers before you tell me. Tell me first. Don't be in a panel, in a committee, and tell them before you tell me. Tell me first. Don't come to this large congregation, church secretary, anybody, and then tell them. Tell me first. What if after you have told them, and then you come back to tell me, and I say, no, that's not the way. But already you've told everybody. And everybody is thinking, this is what we're going to do. And now I said, no, it's going to bring confusion and conflict and rebellion. And people are going to say, why? He already told us, this is what we're going to do. And now he went to tell the pastor, and we're going to have a lot of problems in our hand. But you know, when he came back, he didn't go to tell the congregation. We must avoid the mistake of the past. They told him all things that befell them. Everything they saw. Everything they heard. Everything they felt. All that went on. They told him. And they told him all. Don't give us partial information. Don't give us information that is not complete. Tell us everything. Don't swallow some and speak some out. And now in verse 24. And they said unto Joshua, Truly, certainly, without a shadow of doubt, the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land, even for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. Do you notice something? They gave out the information. They left out the advice. You know, when the other spies came back the other time, they said, this is what we saw. Look at the fruits of the land. But the giants are there. And then they began to give the advice. We cannot go in. We cannot go in. We cannot go. Because the giants are in the land. Don't add advice to the information. Give the information and stop there. We sent you to make a research. And to gather information. And to, and to investigate. The investigation is what you tell us. What you tell me. When you come back. And leave the decision to the hands of Joshua to take a final decision. Now we needed the whole chapter, the whole chapter, so we can have a broad view, an overview of the whole thing. Now, a great discovery, a great discovery. Fear within the enemy's stronghold, a great discovery. Fear. Within the enemy's stronghold. I divide the message to three parts. Number one. Terror and fear in the enemy's stronghold. Terror and fear in the enemy's stronghold. Number two. Trembling and fainting in the enemy's stronghold. Trembling and fainting in the enemy's stronghold. Number three, testimony of faith to encourage the saints. The testimony of faith to encourage the saints. Number one, terror and fear in the enemy's stronghold. In Joshua chapter 2 verse 9. Joshua chapter 2 verse 9. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. And that your terror is falling upon us. That all the inhabitants of the land do faint because of you. Terror and fear in the enemy's stronghold. They, are they were fainting already. They are fainting about us already. They are afraid about us already. 
and it doesn't do any good for them to be afraid and for me to be afraid if they are afraid then i must be courageous because they are already afraid in psalm 105 verse 38 psalm 105 verse 38 egypt was glad when they departed for the fear of them fell upon them the egyptians are afraid of you the magicians are afraid of you all the people of the world whoever they are they're afraid of you and that's why then you become courageous and you're full of faith knowing because they are afraid of you you will then be able to conquer them and you will conquer in jesus name actually that's the promise the lord had given them in exodus chapter 23 exodus chapter 23 i'm reading from verse 27 exodus chapter 23 and i'm reading to you from verse 27 here it says and i will send my fear before thee i will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come and i will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee and i will send the hornets before thee which shall drive out the hevite the hivites the canaanites and the hittite and the hittite and it will be from before thee and then we're told in deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 25 deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 25 in verse 25 of deuteronomy chapter 2 this day i will begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven think about that the lord said i'm bringing the fear the dread of you in the hearts of all the people under the whole heaven and then it says who shall hear report of thee they will hear report of thee they will hear report of thee wait a moment can you look up here for a moment the kind of things you say at home to your neighbors about the church can make them to feel oh we thought deeper life was strong we thought deeper life was great we thought deeper life was impenetrable but from the information these people are sharing about their church looks like deeper life is not as strong as we thought the information you share this happened in our district and you're sharing it openly and it's a negative thing this happened in one of the regions somebody committed this or that and you're sharing that openly it it makes the public it makes the nation it makes your neighbors to feel all right we're afraid of them there's nothing to be afraid of they're just like any other church but when you share with them in our church there's uh, good things happening in this church i said good things are happening in this church blind eyes opening the lame rising up and walking did you see those you saw only three but there were four of them brought from the school of the deaf and dumb and after prayer mentioning the name of jesus all the four boys their ears opened and then they began to talk and then one of them became so excited and he was running all about at the time of testimony they couldn't find him did you hear the wife of the prime minister of namibia she came on thursday when started the crusade in Kaduna on wednesday on thursday she came she was to go for oppression and then when she came on Thursday to the satellite location, she became totally healed. She went back home and, and was tested and she was totally perfectly healed. She came on Friday and then she gave the testimony in Namibia. 
did you hear of the child that had hunchback and then was lame paralyzed at the same time and at the mention of the name of Jesus they sat her like getting to her I think it's in Delta State and then she got up and then all the hunchback went away did you see how those things happen why don't you talk about that and then the people of the world will be afraid they'll be afraid of that church they say there is fire burning there don't go near and there's power resident in that church don't go in there but the kind of things so share the kind of things so tell makes people to look down on the church come to the headquarters here this kind of things to share the kind of things to talk about when all these are brothers and sisters they're coming from the interior they're coming from the stage they're coming from the region some of them they visit lagos maybe just once in a year and and they think that the headquarters is up there the headquarters is mighty from what we see on the on the screen from the crusade everything happening they put the headquarters up there and they're trying to stretch trying to stretch when are we going to get to the headquarters level and then they come over here and then in the hostels and then on the on the road and then under the usher's stand and then everywhere you are you are sharing things this happened what did you hear that we didn't hear before this happened talking about group coordinators about coordinators about full-time workers about the pastor about the general superintendent and then the people come into lagos then they said uh -huh. so the headquarters is like that and they put the headquarters up there before now they feel that the headquarters is also just like them in the interior you have no other thing to share but the things that they heard the things that were shared they brought fear into the heart of the people of the canaanites you don't understand wants to share all these uh, kind of things that are not encouraging to the people that come from the states and you see we are here and we have the original information they say what tell me more their confidence in the headquarters will drop their respect for the headquarters will drop their fear for the headquarters will drop their faith in the headquarters once i get there once my feet will step on that ground the land of transformation the mount of transfiguration i don't even need to see the gs this is what will happen all my sorrows will go all my problems will go when they have good information about the headquarters but if you tell them you know things of no value they aren't going to respect the headquarters. They aren't going to have any fear, any confidence in the headquarters. The things to share, the things to tell, and the things to talk about. Let me ask you, you cannot answer because you don't have chance to respond to me. What face did you have 15 years ago? What respect did you have 15 years ago? For the headquarters here then the face you have the confidence you have now how do you reach the headquarters now compared with how you rated the headquarters 15 years ago what's your mind whenever you are coming to the congress many years ago what was in your mind what was your expectation and what was a high thing you valued i'm going to the headquarters today as you are coming what's in your mind is it not we're going to the congress and the congress at the headquarters is just like any meeting you have in your region in the interior and we is the headquarters not at the same low level on the ground as everybody else in your mind it's because of the things you hear but you know the people heard when they heard fear came into their hearts you know this year it will be a year of testimony yeah. and if in your neighborhood everywhere you are you share you talk about the things that will bring trembling that will bring 
terror into the hearts of the unbelievers immediately the unbelievers will know deeper life is different i said we're different yeah. and, but you know if you if you go around and you know you're talking about witches and wizards and then you're talking to you know your neighbors which is killed some of our members and then the witches are there is that so tell me again where did it happen which is killed some of your members where did that happen and some of those people you are talking about they don't have the label on their forehead some of them are witches then they go to tell their people see we thought deeper life was untouchable but one of them one of their pastors one of their overseers reaching overseers came to tell us in our yard that witches then uh, and then we asked him where did it happen then we investigated we saw that the people he was talking about they are witches of low rank and they were able to kill their people wake up witches if the low ranking witches are able to kill them how about the high ranking witches you expose the church into the hands of those people you know if any witch you know came over here and they hear me talk about faith and they hear me talk about the power residing in this deeper life any of the witches there that listen they will tremble they go back to their company they will say i strayed there i wanted to tell them what i had no man spake like this man before he told us the fire is burning and he gave testimonies and i know the fire is burning there if you don't want to die don't go near a deeper life put your hands together for jesus watch what they hear is what you say what you hear is what you say say the right thing i said say the right thing you know the people in lorry are here i went to a lorry in may and you know in lorry now and, and you know the uh, you know the kind of predominance of the Muslims there in Quara stage, and then the power of God was so great. After I left Hilari, you know what the people was on the street, the Muslims, they said this one is different. They said this is how Anobi Isa. This is how he did it. That means, for those who don't understand their language, they said, this is our prophet Jesus. This is how he did it. Just like that, at the snap of the finger, the, the people, they just received the miracles all over. And then all the Christian bodies there, they came together. They said, get to Lagos and bring that person back. Don't leave, you know, he says he wants to go to other places, bring him back. That if this man can come back to this quarrel, will break the backbone of every other religion in that quarrel state. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If God is doing all that, why is it some people are sitting somewhere and they are talking about things of no value? Things of no benefit. The Lord is on our side. And let me read to you again. That's in Deuteronomy chapter 2, chapter 2 verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 25. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven. Who shall hear the report of thee? Let them hear the right report. And shall tremble. I shall be in anguish because of thee. Point number two. Trembling and fainting in the enemy's stronghold. Trembling and fainting in the enemy's stronghold. In Joshua chapter 2 verse 11. Joshua chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 11. In verse 11 it says and as soon as we heard these things not just this thing not just one thing they heard quite a lot and as soon as we heard these things our hearts did melt neither did there remain any more courage in any man any more courage in any man 
any more courage in any man. Even the magicians of the land, they lost their courage. And even the wicked people, men of the land, they lost their courage. And even the ferocious people in the land, they lost their courage. The lion-like men in the land, they lost their courage. When they heard, when we heard all these things, there was no courage in any man anymore. And then it says, because of you, for the Lord your God is God in heaven above and in us beneath. And that is the thing we need to drum in, drill in, into every heart. In Joshua chapter 5, Joshua chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 1. And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on this, on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan before from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their, their heart melted. Neither was there spirit, courage, fortitude in them anymore because of the children of Israel. That's what those powerful testimonies, that's what they do. Those powerful manifestations of the power of God, that's what it does. When, when you hear those testimonies, then it strikes fear, terror, fainting into the hearts of the people that do not know God. It tells us in 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. When some great things happen by the mighty power of the Lord and the people hear and the people take note of the things that had happened in 2 Kings chapter 7 reading from verse 5 and they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria behold there was no man there for the Lord had made the hosts of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said, one to another, lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians, and they have come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled in the twilight. Because they heard a noise. The oppression of the mighty power of the Lord. Because of that, they arose and they fled. And it says, and left their tents and their horses and their asses. Even the camp as it was and fled for their life. Fear will come on the hearts of the people that were trying to injure you, trying to hurt you. When you tell those testimonies. And then with prayer and with faith in God that the Lord will strike terror, fear, dread into their hearts. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 19. Isaiah chapter 19, reading from verse 16. Isaiah 19, reading from verse 16. In that day shall Egypt be like unto women. And it shall be afraid of fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shakes over it. When the Lord shakes his hand, and mighty deeds of miracles are performed, and they hear in Egypt, they hear in the camp of the enemy, and they hear among the unbelieving people. Then it says there will be a trembling, a shaking in their heart. In that day shall Egypt be like unto women that have no heart. Shall Egypt be so timid 
even though they were forceful and powerful before but they'll hear something and they'll see something and this is the day i said this is the day unbelievers will hear they'll hear a different story this year and they'll see a different thing this year and the stories they hear and the things they, that will come to them they will know power is resident in this place and you know if, if you talk about the good good things happening yes we understand you know sometimes you have a few things happening that you will say you know, why did that happen you know about Korah, and Abiram that rose up against Moses Rahab did not hear that but we know it was there but Rahab did not hear you know about the murmuring of the children of Israel but Rahab did not hear that you know about the complaint. Why did you bring us out of Egypt? We remember the cucumber, the onion, the garlic, the melon that we were eating there. Rahab did not hear that. You know about Judas Iscariot. But you know in the Acts of the Apostles, who reckoned with Judas Iscariot? Reckon with the miracles and the power, the great things that the Lord is doing. And think about them and publicize them. So and so left the church, and so what? Rahab did not hear that. Why talk about it? So and so did not come to the Congress. Who knows about that? Look at all this sea of heads. Talk about what we see here. Talk about the great things, the wonderful things. What are you talking about? Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. Talk about the miracles. And talk about the manifestation of the power of God. And let the Egyptians and the Canaanites begin to tremble. They will tremble for us. In that verse 16 it says, And in that day shall Egypt be like unto women. And it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which it shall shake over it. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. You know, there was a time when Egypt was a terror to the children of Israel. But now it says things are turning around. This new year, things are turning around. And the people of the land will be in terror because of the people of God in Jesus' name. Amen. And then it says in verse 17, Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts, which he has determined against it. Point number three. Testimony of faith to encourage the saints. The testimony of faith to encourage the saints. In Joshua chapter 2. Reading from verse 24 now. Joshua chapter 2. Reading from verse 24. And they said unto Joshua. Truly the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land. What a great testimony. What a great testimony. These spies were an encouragement to Joshua. And their testimony agreed with the promise and proclamation of the Almighty God unto Joshua. Joshua, see, I have given you all the land. And then the spies came back and they said, Joshua, leader, captain, truly. As God has said, the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land. Let your testimony match the promise. Let your declaration match what the Lord had said. And all these negative, if you have all these negative things to say, you have a goal, you're an enemy. You want to bring down the face of the people. 
Instead of putting fear in the hearts of the unbelievers, you want fear to be, discouragement to be in the hearts of the believers. You want to weaken the church. You have a goal, but you will not succeed. If you come to a congress like this, and instead of sharing the great, great things, the wonderful and the mighty things to encourage the hearts of the believers. Look at all these people here from all over the nation and from many countries. And this is where they bring their candle to light their candle at the beginning of the year. This is where they come to get the fire from the altar upon the altar of their heart. At the beginning of the year, this is where they come to get encouragement, upliftment. This is where they come to get the courage and the fire and the zeal and the vision, the revelation for the rest of the year. If you see a crowd like this wanting to get something, I need fire from the altar. And you then in your hostel, you begin to share things that will dampen their faith. You are an enemy. But if you come and you share... The things that will help people, uplift people, that they will say, thank God, I came to the Mount of Transfiguration. And the things they hear will lift them up, will make them to run, will make them to walk, will make them to want to serve the Lord. What they see, what they hear, then you are a friend. Come near. We can walk together. You see those spies, they came back to Joshua. And they said, truly, definitely the lord has given us the land and then they said for even all the inhabitants of the country they do faint because of us there's a new day and there is a new understanding now that uh, you, that anywhere we go now what are we going to share i said what are we going to share you know in the hostel what do we share <laughs> Look at this. This year, uh, this past year alone, I was in Undo, Undo City, and then I was in uh, I was in Abuja a City, and then in February I was in Laro, a Yewa region, and then that same time, that same February I was in Oshobo, and then in March I was in Uyo there. You remember? Great things. You remember? Why didn't you talk about it to your people there? And then in that match, I went to Douala. And the Douala people, are, you know what happened. You know what happened. They brought him from the hospital in Douala. And then I said, you know, we came into April. I was in Ghana. And then we came into May. I was in, uh, over there in Ilori. And then at the end of May, I was over there again in, um, in May now. That's Shagamu over there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How can you forget Shagamu? Clap for Shagamu there now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then for in all the countries, in the Republic, I was there this past year. Burkina Faso, you are there. I was there with you. And then in Togo, in Lome, I was there. You know the things that happened there. And then in, Lib in uh, Liberia, I think about that. In Liberia, the power of God and the tremendous things that the Lord did. All those various countries. And then all those of you in those places that I came to your country, or I came to your city, I came to your state this past year, and yet I still had all those Africa white crusades, and I still went to Britain, and I still went to America, and I still went to other countries, I still went to France, I still went to Netherlands, I still went to Germany, and I still went to all, I still went to Italy. I went to all those places and everywhere I have gone, the power of God just moved in such a tremendous way. All those things happening, you don't find anything to talk about except some low level things that you will discourage people, rise up and begin to talk about the great things that the Lord is doing. I will talk about it. I will talk about it. I will talk about it. How about you? Rise up and make a commitment to the Lord. We have what to talk about. We have a lot of things to talk about. The great things. The mighty things. The wonderful things. The marvelous things. The miraculous things. That the Lord did. Talk about them. Talk about them. 
Talk about them. Talk about them anywhere you are. And bring fear into the hearts of the unbelievers. And bring courage and bring faith into the hearts of the believers. We have something to talk about. We have something to talk about. We have something to talk about. The great things that the Lord has done. The mighty things that the Lord has done. That's what will bring fear into the minds of the unbelievers. There will be fear in the enemy's stronghold. There will be fear in the enemy's stronghold. Talk about the great things. The great encounter. The unforgettable things. The miracles. The mighty things. The powerful things that the Lord has done. That's what to talk about. That's what to talk about. That's what to talk about. And then there will be the faith and the courage and the vision and the desire, the dedication in the hearts of the believers. Then there will be the terror. There will be the fear. There will be the dread in the hearts of the enemies. Fear in the enemies camp. Fear in the enemy's territory. Fear in the enemy's stronghold. What you talk about will reveal you either as a friend of the church or an enemy of the church. What you talk about will reveal the purpose of your mind. Whether you want to weaken the church or you want to strengthen the church. What you talk about will reveal. Who sent you here? Whether God sent you here or Satan sent you here to come and destabilize us. What you talk about, what you think about, what you share, what reveal the kind of person you are. A lot of good things to talk about. A lot of wonderful things to talk about. A lot of beautiful miracles to talk about. A lot of wonders and signs to talk about that will bring fear in the hearts of the unbelievers big fear in the hearts of the people that are on the other side of the face dread and fear in the hearts of sinners concerning the body of Christ the children of God bring back a good report tell us a good report something that will encourage the heart of Joshua Something that will encourage the heart of the people of God, the children of Israel, the body of Christ, this congregation of leaders. We come to have revival. What do you talk about in your still? We come to have the power of God for the rest of the year. What do you talk about when you meet together? We come to we, we come to have the fire, the revival, the zeal. From this place, the Mount of Transfiguration, we come to have the operational power of the Lord. What do you talk about? If Rahab had heard what you are talking about, would she have faith in the God of Israel? If Rahab, if Rahab had heard what you are talking about in the free time, would she have faith in the God of Israel? If the people of Jericho hear what you talk about concerning the church, would they have any fear, any dread, any timidity, any shake, any trembling concerning the body of Christ, concerning the church? Let them hear the good, good things. Don't talk about Korah, Dathan, and Abira. Don't talk about those under discipline. Uh, to, to anybody, what does that do? How does that help? How does that lift up the faith of the people of God? How does that bring fear in the hearts of all the people of Canaan? What's your goal? What's your goal? Why are you here? To discourage us? To dampen our zeal? To weaken us? Why are you here? What did you come here to do? 
to strengthen the hands of our enemies to encourage those who want to tear down the church is that your goal or to build up the faith of believers to build up the courage of believers what's your goal to send fear fainting trembling terror into the hearts of the unbelievers of the evil doers if that's your goal your language will become positive you have some beautiful testimonies to share if that's your goal then you'll be selective in the things you say there must be a transformation in your heart then there'll be a change of direction a change of talk a change in your discussion a change in your sharing a change in your attitude then you'll be encouraging the people of god your action your discussion your attitude your appearance your testimonies will be helping and lifting up the mind and the heart of joshua be giving him more courage more confidence you'll be sowing some good seeds of good testimony with one another and with the leadership tell the lord the talk of your mouth will change the sharing the interaction will change since there are a lot of good good things to talk about you'll talk about the good good things and that will bring courage faith to the israel of god the people of god the church of god that will bring fear to the people in jericho that will bring fear, dread to the hearts of the enemies of the people of God. Talk about it. The great, great things the Lord has done. Talk about them. Talk about them over and over over and over let the world hear let the earth hear let all the people hear make a commitment to the lord this year you'll not talk about negative things you're talking about positive things great things marvelous things that the lord has done that will send fear trembling to the hearts of the Canaanites. Share the word, the good word. Tell the story, a good story. Tell the testimonies. The great, wonderful testimonies. Share them. Talk about them. In the midst of the people of God here, that's what to talk about. In the hostels, that's what to talk about. In the free times, that's what to talk about. And if anybody talks to you about any other thing that will dampen your face, 
that will lower the respect you have for a general superintendent or for the headquarters. We say, please, I don't want to hear that. I'm here to get something for the rest of the year that will encourage me. Don't tell me something like that. I want to grow. I want to progress. What you are telling me will not help me to grow. Shut it up. Swallow it. What I want to hear is what will prepare me for the rest of the year. Don't talk to unbelievers. What will make them feel that the church has nothing to offer them? Tell them things that will show the power as of old is still there. And they will be afraid to touch the anointed of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the revelation of your word to us today. We thank you, Lord. There is enough to encourage the face of the children of God. There is enough of what you have done to bring fear, dread, trembling, terror into the hearts of the unbelievers. Oh, Lord, we pray you make us focus on the right things in Jesus' name. There's enough to share. That will lift up our reverence, our honor for the glory of God in heaven. There is enough to tell one another that will make us respect leadership. That will make us to understand God as Saint Joshua. To lead the people of God into the land of promise. There is enough to share. That will bring fear in the hearts of the Canaanites. That they will know the people of God are coming on. The church of God is marching into the land of promise. That's enough to make them just surrender their tools. And know it is futile. It is useless. And it's going to be counterproductive to fight against these people of God who are marching in. And Lord we pray from today. The word of testimony will be in our mouth. And will share what will bring joy, gladness, faith, courage in the hearts of the people of God in Jesus' name. And the things will share will bring dread, fear, timidity, weakness in the hearts of the unbelievers in Jesus' name. What will share will make them to surrender. And then they will give their lives to you. What was share will make them to be like Rahab. That will say, we know that the Lord has given you the land. We know that you are the favorites of God. We know that the power of God resides in you. And we want to join. We want to be converted. We want to come in. We want to have the privilege that you have. Oh Lord, help us to have the wisdom, the vision, the desire. To be a positive impact and influence on everybody around us. So they will come into the kingdom in Jesus name. Increase our faith. And increase the fear in the hearts of the unbelievers. Increase the fear and the trembling in the hearts of the witches and wizards. That they will know we are untouchable. Our pastor is untouchable. Our general superintendent is untouchable. Our overseers are untouchable. Our workers are untouchable. Our members are untouchable. Lord, we pray. Everything we share, everything we tell, everything we talk about this year. With all the neighbors, everybody around us, they will know those are the untouchable people. That the wall of fire surround every one of us. And that Lord, every time they see us, they will tremble and fear in Jesus' name. Confirm it in our lives. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.